This is Homeschool 101, a collaboration between ABS Television and the Ministry of Education. Stay attentive and attempt all activities. And now, today's lesson. Hello, this is Homeschool 101, and my name is Nikisha Smith, and I am a lecturer at the Antigua State College where I teach Caribbean Studies for CAPE. Caribbean Studies is a subject that helps one to understand their role as a Caribbean citizen and of their responsibility in preserving the heritage of the region. Today's topic is going to be Caribbean integration, which is in module two of the Caribbean Studies syllabus. At the end of this module, you should be able to describe the evolution of the integration movement in the Caribbean explain the ways in which the integration movement has influenced development in the region. You explain are in tune with the nation's stations. In the deepening of the integration movement and explain the challenges and achievements of key regional institutions. Let's get started. So before we go into the topic, we first have to understand what is integration. So from the Cambridge Dictionary, we have two definitions. One is the action or process of combining two or more things in, in an effective way, uh, or the action or process of successfully joining or mixing with a different group of people. So in, in this way, we should understand from this definition that the action of combining two, two or more things should be done to improve things, not to make things worse. So that's the understanding you should get from this definition. So why should we integrate in the Caribbean? Integration is something that has been long sought by the peoples of the English-speaking Caribbean particularly because of the belief that they share a common identity despite the diversity. It is also a response to globalization, which is the um, shrinking of the world and the effects of small islands in a big world operating on an equal footing with much larger countries. So these are the reasons why we should integrate. So before we go into the different integration um, attempts in the Caribbean, we're going to go through the general stages of economic cooperation. And everything that we mention afterwards will be put within that framework. So we have stage one, free trade area. In this, in this stage, you have the removal of barriers to trade. So countries would remove barriers to trade with one another, but keep their own barriers their own restrictions for countries outside of the group. So you have a little, a little uh, you have you form a group. There will be um, no barriers between them, but outside of the group, there will be barriers. In the second stage, you have the customs union. In this one, you have a common external tariff. So building on the free trade area, now all of the countries in the group would agree on similar policies towards countries outside of the group. In the third stage, you have the common market. And in this stage, you have common quantitative restrictions. So in addition to the internal free trade, no barriers between each other, and a common set of external trade barriers, there's now the addition of free movement of capital and labor within the common market. And in the fourth stage of economic cooperation, you have the economic union. This is going to be the highest level of integration. And in this, you have common financial, economic, taxation, and social policies. This is the highest form of economic cooperation among countries. Countries may cooperate on all matters affecting them. This comes close to a political union, or what we would know as a federation. We're going to start. So you may wonder if maybe CARICOM was the first attempt at integration in the region. Nope. It started long before with the Leeward Islands Federation, which lasted from 1671 to 1958. So this lasted hundreds of years. 
So the Leeward Islands was established as an English colony in 1671. The island shared one governor and attorney general, but kept its own assembly and made its own laws. In 1816, the islands were divided into two different regions. We have Antigua, Barbuda, and Montserrat in one colony. And just note, Antigua was not a twin island state with Barbuda as yet. There were different islands. And then you have St. Christopher, Nevis, Anguilla, and the Virgin Islands in the other grouping. The Leeward Islands as an entity were united again in 1833, coming together until 1871 under the administration of the governor of Antigua. Here they had one set of laws and each island was called a presidency under its own administrator or commissioner. The islands then became known as the Federal Colony of the Leeward Islands from 1871 to 1956, with Dominica becoming part of the colony in 1871, but leaving it again in 1940 and in 1958, the remaining islands were absorbed into the West Indies Federation. So as you see, the Leeward Islands, the countries that make up the Leeward Islands, have a long history of integration. So that's why even up until this day, we're pretty close. And at the bottom, you would see that I have a question. Was this a stage four type of integration? It was supposed to be almost like a federal colony, everything operating as one. So this would have been one of the highest forms of economic cooperation. These are some of the symbols that are associated with the Leeward Islands Federation. You have the pineapple, which is the symbol for, for Antigua being prominent. You have ships, which would, of course, indicate our sugar history. And these were some of the coins. And this is the coat of arms that was for the, for the Federation. So a Federation we're next, going on to the next um, stage of economic cooperation. You have the West Indies Federation, which lasted from 1958 to 1962, and this would have been a stage four um, type of economic cooperation. A federation is a union of self-governing territories, which are states or nations in their own right. The overarching authority for all the states is centralized in the federal government. Um, if you need something as a, something to compare it to, let's think of the United States, which has different 51 states. They all have their governor. They're um, independent, but then there's a centralized government in Washington, Washington D.C. That's the same type of system that the West Indies Federation was trying to achieve. The Federation was the first. The, first 20th century attempt at developing a political union among the various British colonies. The participants were Antigua and Barbuda, Dominica, Jamaica, St. Kitts and Nevis, Anguilla, Montserrat, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, Barbados, Grenada, and Trinidad and Tobago. Guyana, Belize, the Bahamas, and the Virgin Islands did not participate at that time. The capital was established in Port of Spain with the British Lord Hales as Governor General and Sir Grant Lee Adams as Chief Minister of Barbados as the Prime Minister. From the beginning, the Federation suffered from inadequate financing and over time there was growing alienation between the federal authorities and local governing bodies. The capital of the West Indies Federation was established in Port of Spain with the British Lord Hales as Governor General and Sir Grantley Adams as Chief Minister of Barbados as the Prime Minister. From the beginning, the Federation suffered from inadequate financing and over time there was growing alienation um, between the federal authorities and the local governing bodies. Because as you can imagine, these states giving over control to the federal, to the federal um, body became a little difficult. So the Federation quickly ground to a halt as Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago bickered over their own interest. 
Eric Williams, Prime Minister of Trinidad, was uncompromising in his refusal to accept unrestricted freedom of movement because he felt that the poor and dispossessed from other countries would flock to the Twin Island state. And on the other side, Jamaica was not in favor of accepting a binding customs union and held a referendum in 19, 1961 where the people of that country voted against remaining in the Federation. So at the end of it, Prime Minister um, Eric Williams summed up the situation when he said, one from 10 leaves not. So within a year, Jamaica and Trinidad gained their independence from Britain, both in 1962 and the West Indies Federation ground to a halt. The West Indies Federation, though, had some major accomplishments. The University of the West Indies was established as a three-campus region-wide tertiary learning institution, and those um, campuses were in Jamaica, Trinidad, and Barbados. You had the regional shipping service set up during the Federation to control the operation of the two ships donated in 1962 by the government of Canada. They were called the Federal Palm and the Federal Maple. And then you had the establishment of the Caribbean Meteorological Service in 1963, which was replaced by the Caribbean Meteorological um, Organization in 1973. Um, this particular organization comes in handy when we have um, natural disasters such as hurricanes or volcanoes. So the next step at Caribbean integration is going to be CARIFTA in 1968. And as you would notice, it went from a stage four type of integration all the way back down to a stage one. So we took a severe step back at when the Fed West Indies Federation was not able to succeed. So several years passed after the Federation, West Indies Federation, before the islands attempted integration again. They agreed to a type of uh, economic integration which focused only on trade by removing trade barriers on, or tariffs on interregional trade in goods produced within the region. The Caribbean Free Trade Association, CARIFTA, was formed in 1965 and was delayed to get more members, thus it started officially in 1968. It was the beginning of an initiative to be called the Caribbean Common Market. The common market was to be established in stages so that the trade arrangement would be viable. Two of its major achievements were the establishment of the Commonwealth Caribbean Regional Secretariat in 1968 and the Caribbean Development Bank in 1969. After CARIFTA was formed, Caribbean leaders found it necessary to extend and deepen the links within the region by moving from a simple free trade area to a limited common market. And so that's where we have CARICOM, Caribbean community, being established in 1973, which is a stage three type of economic cooperation. Um, this would ensure a stronger path to development, especially in the face of greater competitiveness from global forces. The Treaty of Tragaramas was signed by Barbados, Jamaica, Guyana, and Trinidad and Tobago in 1973. Yes, just four countries. Following this, the other eight territories joined CARICOM in 1974. You have Antigua and Barbuda, Belize, Grenada, Montserrat, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Dominica and St. Kitts and Nevis. Bob Bahamas joined in 1983, but not as a part of the Customs Union. British Virgin Islands and Turks and Caicos joined in 1991 as associate members, so they weren't full members. And Surin Suriname joined in 1995 and Haiti in 2002. There are other associate member states and observer states. As you notice, that's the flag of the um, Caribbean community. So it established the basis of a common market where there was internal free trade and a common external tariff, like what we said in the beginning. 
and some provisions made for the eventual removal of restrictions on the movement of capital. So investors were free to move their profits and their investments to their preferred sites. So you can take your money and start a business in one of the associated um, Caribbean countries instead of just being limited to one state. Um, you also had um, the lifting of restrictions on the movement of services, such as insurance, banking, finance, architecture, engineering, and medicine, etc. And of course, labor within the region. So you don't need to um, have a permit, work permit um, for certain areas, such as being an athlete, artists, um, and university graduates. Some achievements of CARICOM would be that it creates a larger market for member states and businesses. Um, it gives the region an influential voice in global matters because the Caribbean region is very tiny when you compare it to the rest of the world. And so we speak as a group instead of just individual dots. You also have the, in, the establishment of institutions such as um, SIDERA, um, Caribbean Meteorological Organization, Caribbean Food and Nutrition Institute, and these provide services to member states. So instead of have investing money in having these institutions established in each country, they just have one organization which offers their services to all member states. And another achievement is that it negotiates regional economic agreements on behalf of the group. Some limitations of CARICOM would be that there's competition among member states for overseas markets. For example, in areas of tourism, you're going to find that all Caribbean countries rely on tourism, and so they're competing for the same tourists. You have continued dominance of foreign comp companies in, in, um, in the CARICOM member states, so the goal of establishing strong businesses within the region has not been um, established to the degree that we expected. And then, of course, you have fragmented foreign policy positions, especially regarding US regional policies. So instead of having one um, type of message to the rest of the world, sometimes we have um, different views, different positions. Um, resulting. So some challenges um, for CARICOM would be sharing amongst member states the wealth generated from natural resources. For example, um, countries like Trinidad has oil, Guyana now has oil. Um, you have countries like Jamaica having bauxite, but then it's not a common pool. It's for those countries only. So um, establishing whether it is for everyone or just for those countries, that has not been done to the degree that it should be. You have improving um, dissemination of information, implementation, and ratification of decisions. So decisions are made at the CARICOM level, but then getting it within the hands of the people, that's another, that's another issue. And another challenge is resolving conflicts between national profiling versus a united regional stance. So we still, we're still fragmented. Rather than thinking of, it, of ourselves as a one region, one area, we still think of ourselves as individual countries. And that's a major limitation or challenge to the operation of CARICOM. So another area of um, economic cooperation within the Caribbean region is the organization of Eastern Caribbean states, established in 1981. And this is actually a stage four type of integration. Due to the history of the Leeward Islands Federation, the countries that, had that formed the OECS and others have always felt a sense of unity and identity making them a distinctive sub-region within the Caribbean. Um, as much smaller states, they are a, all especially vulnerable to natural disasters and external shocks to their economies. So they, more than any other 
um, countries in the Caribbean always felt the need to integrate. So the Treaty of Basseterre, um, signed in 1981, formalized various aspects of economic cooperation among seven island states. We have Antigua and Barbuda, now formerly a twin island state, as when they um, got independence in 1981. You also have Dominica, Grenada, Montserrat, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. You'll notice at the top, you have the symbol of the OECS. And the, and the country, the flags of the countries that are participating, and the slogan, one community growing together. So some achievements of the OECS would be free movement of people. We have no restrictions. You can move to another OECS country and live normally, just like any other citizen. You don't need a permit, all those sorts of things. And you also have free movement of goods, services, and capital. You have a single currency, the XCD or Eastern Caribbean dollar. So that's the same currency that's being used in all the OECS states. You have a central bank, the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank and the Eastern Caribbean Currency Authority, ECCA, and those are located in St. Kitts. You have a common market, Eastern Com Caribbean Common Market, ECCM. You have a single judicial system, the West Indies Associated States Supreme Court, a joint civil aviation authority, and you have the Eastern Caribbean Tourism Association, ECTA. So, um, lots of um, integration movements within the Caribbean. So the next, the, the next um, integration attempt would be the ACS, or the Association of Caribbean States, and this is a stage two type of economic cooperation, so that's a common market. So the ACS was established in 1994 among 25 nations of the Caribbean region, and this is when we're expanding the definition of the Caribbean to be um, those that are washed by the Caribbean Sea. So therefore, you're going to get Latin American countries um, included in the mix. So those countries were Mexico, Belize, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama, Colombia, Venezuela, Guyana, Suriname, Trinidad and Tobago, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Barbados, Dominica, Grenada, St. Lucia, Antigua and Barbuda, St. Kitts and Nevis, Dominican Republic, Haiti, Jamaica, Cuba, and the Bahamas. What does the ACS actually do? So together, these countries comprise a population of 23, 237 million people and form the world's large, fourth largest trading bloc after the EU, the North American Free Trade Association, NAFTA, and the Association of Southeastern, Southeast Asian Countries, ASEAN. So it's a constitutes a pretty um, formidable trading bloc. So the primary aim in setting up this wider Caribbean regional body was to promote economic cooperation and encourage a coordinated approach to issues of importance to all the countries of the region, such as trade, tourism, transportation, health, science and technology, education, culture, and environmental protection. The next attempt at um, economic co cooperation is the establishment of the Free Trade Area of the Americas, FTAA, and that's a stage one. The idea of the FTAA was to eliminate or reduce trade barriers among all the nation states of the Western Hemisphere, excluding Cuba. It was strongly influenced by the World Trade Organization, WTO, and the forces of internationalization of trade, finance, and capital. So this, this just means that because of um, the forces of globalization, which are turning the world into um, one global community, um, you need to integrate, essentially. So the FTA, 
FTAA missed the targeted deadline of 2005, however, which followed the stalling of useful negotiations of the World Trade Organization Ministerial Conference of 2005. Over the next few years, some governments, most notably the United States, not wanting to lose any chance of hemispheric trade expansion, moved in the direction of establishing a series of bilateral trade deals. So instead of negotiating with the countries as a block, they decided to do country by country instead so that they can maximize the amounts of benefits that they could get. So the leaders, however, planned further discussions at the Sixth Summit of the Americas in Cartagena, Colombia in 2012, although these discussions did not take place. So in actuality, the FTAA is not a reality. So now we have the next attempt at um, Caribbean integration, the biggest, um, would be the CARICOM Single Market and Economy, CSME, which is on stage four. So the CSME was endorsed by the 13th meeting of the Conference of Heads in 1992. It is an instrument to facilitate the economic, social, market, and human development of member states in a liberalized and globalized environment through the pooling of resources. So CSME is the next step after CARICOM. Okay. So the basic objectives of the CSME would be enhanced levels of increasing competitiveness, full employment of labor and other factors of production, expansion of trade and economic relations with other Caribbean, Latin, and Central American countries, accelerated, coordinated, and sustained economic development and convergence, and the achievement of a greater measure of economic leverage and effectiveness of member states in dealing with third states or groups. So remember the initial definition that we have of integration, pulling, putting two or more groups together to make something effective, this is ideally what CSME is supposed to do, make the Caribbean countries effective. So the basic objectives of the CSME um, would be to enhance levels of, um, have enhanced levels of increased com competitiveness in the member states, full employment of labor and other factors of production within the region, expansion of trade and economic relations with other Caribbean, Latin, and Central American countries, accelerated, coordinate, and sustained economic development and convergence, and the achievement of a greater measure of economic leverage and effectiveness of member states in dealing with third states or groups. So just like how we had in the, uh, in the first part, the definition of integration, combining two or more things to make it effective, that's what CM CSME is supposed to do to Caribbean countries. In the CSME would be, you have the single market. It is a market area created from the unification of national markets and from several countries. So you have no tariffs, barriers, or restrictions. Just like what we went through in the beginning. You have a single economy. It is the creation of an economic space that approximates a single country from the economies of several countries. And it is an arrangement in which foreign exchange, interest policies, tax regimes, and laws are harmonized. So basically, everything within the grouping is the same. And of course, you have the creation of an inclusive trade policy. So therefore, you have the same rules inside and outside of the region. So why do we need the CSME? You have things such as globalization and liberalization. So it provides the platform whereby the ever important global standards are tested regionally through the CSME. And so therefore, if we want to go global, if any of our countries need to go, um, companies need to go global, the CSME will provide that platform for them to be able to compete. You have slow internal development within the Caribbean. So it provides a platform for the development strategy, which is social, human, economic, political, infrastructural, and legal. So it's going to basically boost the, our development um, socially. 
We have limited opportunities and growth as individual countries, but as a region where you have um, more resources, more labor, um, uh, different types of resources at your fingertips, opportunities are going to be expanded. We are small economies, so it allows for the restructuring of national economies, becoming more competitive and efficient both nationally and regionally. And we're also highly uh, vulnerable to economic shock, natural disasters and structure of economy. So therefore, if we can rely on our fellow Caribbean countries instead of relying just on ourselves, that's going to be to our benefit. So some instruments of the um, CSME, you have the Caribbean Court of Justice, um, which is the anchor to the CSME, interpreting the trading rules of the community. And you have the movement of services, sportsmen and women, artists, journalists, university graduates, musicians, nurses, teachers, move, all moving, being able to move from one member state to the, to the next, working freely without permits. Some challenges of the CSME, um, these were compiled by Carol Sampson, who was a doctor, doc, uh, doctorate candidate in transnational political systems. And he said that there are three major challenges. You have geographical, political, and economic. So geographical, the cost of travel within the region is very high. We are separated by water. Every other type of federation within the world, like the USA and Europe, you can get to another country by rail, by bus. Um, so separation by water actually constitutes a very big challenge for the Caribbean. And so a solution that was suggested is to have a Caricom funded ferry service, larger social surplus, competition with air aircraft industry, so that it costs of travel needs to go down. That's a big challenge to the CSME. We also have um, political challenges, such as we have a legacy of distrust between the different countries, you know, Guyanese, Jamaican, no need to say further, right? So that works against having integration within the countries. And you have weak restraints on political actors. So politicians have a way of stepping in and stopping um, the process of integration. For example, that happened with the West Indies Federation when they um, voted to come out. So a solution would be create binding CSME constitutions to limit politicians impinging on citizens' rights and enforcing market preserving uh, mechanisms so that businesses within the Carib Caribbean can be enhanced. So in actuality, this would be talking about um, protectionism rather than liberalization of, these, of the economy, which is going against globalization, but that's what we need in the Caribbean. And you have, you have a dominance of the large countries and um, source of um, migration in the economic sense. We have um, migration being a big problem in the Caribbean, migration outside of the region, actually. Um, and so what you need to do is have countries of a similar size integrate, so that if we can have all the countries integrate, have some countries integrate fully, and so therefore get the integration process started. Major institutions that foster Caribbean integration, right? So. Throughout this whole, whole process, we had a number of organizations that were formed. Now we have institutions that were formed through that integration, which are changing the lives of Caribbean citizens to this day. So we have the University of the West Indies. This was, um, has been functioning since 1948. It has four com campuses located in Jamaica, Trinidad, ba Barbados, and Antigua, and 11 cents in non-campus countries. Um, some achievements is that it promotes understanding among Caribbean peoples of different cultures. It adds to the GDP of beneficiary countries because once you have students, they're going to be spending money. 
it offers courses relevant to the needs of the region, plus it puts the Caribbean on the global stage and it plays a critical role in the educational advancement of the people of the region. Some challenges to the UB would be competition from foreign universities which enter into partnership with local agencies to offer their programs locally. Um, you have individual governments who see the need for local university to meet the increasing demand for tertiary education. So when we have more and more um, campuses, that's going to be widening the pool or weakening the pool of resources to, to maintain these universities. And you have the need to expand to raise the level of graduates. Another valuable institution for formed from our integration in the region would be the Caribbean Examinations Council, otherwise known as CXC, which was formed in 1972. It replaced the Oxford Cambridge Examination Syndicates. It consists of syllabus um, developed by Caribbean people and examinations set and marked in the Caribbean with substantially more Caribbean content. And there are 16 participating territories in CSEC, Caribbean Secondary Examinations Certificate, and CAPE, Caribbean Advanced Proficiency Examinations. Achievements of CXC would be developing syllabuses to address regional development, including subjects like religion, music, Caribbean studies, communication studies, environmental science, etc and it established school-based assessments which encourage student-led projects, independent thinking and inquiry skills. Some challenges to the CXC would include the internationalization and popularity of examinations from the metropole, such as SATs, scholastic assessment tests, and baccalaureate from French countries. So six Form as an institution is declining also in the Caribbean, and CXC um, will be examining a decreasing clientele because of the movement of these other examinations. The Caribbean Court of Justice, CCJ. As we learned earlier, this is an essential um, institution in the functioning of the CSME. And so this was established in um, 2001 by 12 heads of government of Caribbean countries. And so by signing it, they would have indicated that they were in support of the CCG and wanted their country to be a part of it. And so those countries were Antigua and Barbuda, Barbados, Belize, Dominica, Grenada, Guyana, Jamaica, St. Kitts, St. Nevis, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, and the Grenadines, Suriname, and Trinidad and Tobago. This is the symbol of the CCJ. The CCJ and the revised Treaty of Chagaramas. Um, the CCJ was brought into being due to the signing of the revised Treaty of Chagaramas, establishing the CARICOM single market and economy. And um, basically, it is the plan and intention of CARICOM countries that there will be one single market for the production and economic development of all CARICOM countries. And it also includes the free movement of skilled workers, capital, and business across the region. So therefore, we need the CCG in order to make the CSME become reality. So this, what does the CCCJ do? It will decide how CARICOM organs and institutions, member states, businesses, and citizens must function under the CSME. The main objectives of the CSME include the free movement of skilled workers, capital, and businesses across the Caribbean region. So the CCJ started operations in 2005. It is a traveling court, um, which means that it can travel to and operate in any contracting parties. And um, the headquarters are in Port of Spain, Trinidad, and Tobago. And so that country is referred to as the seat of the court. However, it can move. CCJ has two functions. 
You have the original jurisdictions, which deals with your right to move between CARICOM countries freely and your right to move your money and your business. This is the basis of the CARICOM single market and economy and the revised Treaty of Chagaramas. And it also has the appellate jurisdiction to hear appeals from courts of those countries which decide to use it for this reason. In its appellate jurisdiction, the Caribbean Court of Justice hears appeals from courts in civil and in criminal cases. All CARICOM countries, all CARICOM member states who have signed the agreement establishing the CCJ are members of the CCJ. So therefore, they can um, benefit from this function. So some of the benefits of having the CCJ is that it enhances and it improves access to justice. It is considered to be cheaper and easier to carry out an appeal to the CCJ rather than the Privy Council in England. Um, originally, one has to pay lawyers, pay the fare to London, um, the hotel, pay your London lawyer, etc. And sometimes an appeal can take up to 10 years. So f um, for a convicted criminal, it would be cheap because the government pays, but for ordinary citizens, that has to come out of your pocket. Um, so having it within the region is going to be a significant reduction in cost. Um, there are also certain technological advances um, because the CCJ allows one to um, read a case via Skype and video link options. So lawyers do not have to travel. So therefore, by embracing technology, the CCJ is actually making it easier for people to access justice. Another benefit is that it's considered to be a matter of sovereignty and independence. So with the CCJ, Caribbean countries no longer have to rely on judges in London to be the final judge on their own matters. So Car Commonwealth Caribbean countries are not truly independent. Well, that's the argument if they're not a part of the CCJ. And also the trust fund used to operate the court helps to insulate the court from financial instability and to make it immune from governmental pressure, which is one of the criticisms of the CCJ. And it has prevented countries from signing as the final court of appeal. Um, just to note, although Antigua has not signed on to have the CCJ as its final court of appeal, it has paid into the fund to support the CCJ's functioning. The Caribbean Court of Justice also will provide a final court for hearing civil matters that would usually be limited to national courts. And it will provide a final court for hearing Caribbean state or government, government matters. It is the, also the sole adjudicator of issues under the revised treaty. So, um, in terms of matters related to the CSME, the Privy Council cannot hear those cases. It has to be the CCJ alone. Some arguments against the CCJ would be the quality of judges. Um, the Privy Council, which has been around since the 1708, has a long history and tradition of of trying cases, and they are considered to have the best judges in the world from New Zealand, Australia, England, and give judgments of the highest quality that have influenced the understanding of modern law. Um, and so therefore, the CCJ would be a relatively new um, court system, so therefore maybe their judges aren't as seasoned. So. Another criticism is that the judges in the CCJ are appointed because of political influence and connections. So there is some concern that there would be some bias um, in their decisions. And also the Privy Council is free of cost. So to hear your appeal at the Privy Council is free, it's just that the process, lawyers, travel is not free. Another institution that helps with Caribbean integration is the Regional Security System, RSS. This was established in October 1982 by five states in the Eastern Caribbean. You have Barbados, Antigua and Barbuda, Dominica, St. Lucia, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. 
and um, St. Kitts joined in 1985. So the memorandum provides, uh, makes provisions for a fast-moving, non-bureaucratic uh, organization which could react to the security needs of member states if requested. So the original memorandum came at a point in time when Grenada was being governed by the socialist policies of the Bishop government and uh, there was some uneasiness among the U U.S. security forces about Bishop's intentions in the region, which encouraged the U.S. to support the RSS initiative. So in October of 1983, um, together with the military forces of the United States of America and Jamaica, the RSS deployed troops to Grenada to restore democracy after a period of political upheaval. So that was the beginning of the RSS in, within the region. So what is the structure of the RSS? It is a hybrid organization in that its security forces comprise both military and per police personnel who remain under the command of their respective heads. The RSS has additional responsibilities to the wider CARICOM region, as indicated on the Treaty of Security Assistance. So the TSA identifies RSS headquarters as part of the regional response mechanism. So basically on matters of um, drugs or terrorism, the RSS is the, is the body that reacts within the Caribbean region. RSS operations consist of maritime, air and land activities. Each component plays a crucial role in the success, success of all RSS operations. Additionally, each component is dependent on one another for mission success. All three have different capabilities, but as a team, they provide the RSS with unmatched capability on land, sea, and air. Um, traditionally, the RSS was concerned with traditional security threats of an operational nature, namely illicit drugs, arms trafficking, and internal security within the countries. Some challenges of the RSS. Funds are limited to carry out the original intentions of maintaining databases on intelligence issues, extending the training to more of the armed forces and monitoring the region for by better equipping the Coast Guard service. Some of the territories do not agree with the extent of the U.S. involvement in developing the system and carrying out maneuvers locally, including patrolling Caribbean waters. As a security system for the Caribbean, it should be policing all of the CARICOM countries um, and also other countries facing similar risks and security systems, but it is limited to six states. So therefore, there is some limitations to the actual security functions of the RSS. So um, another institution that helps in Caribbean integration is the Caribbean Tourism Organization, CTO. This was established in 1989. It is an international development agency located in Barbados. The primary objective of CTO is to provide to and through its members the services and information necessary for the development of sustainable tourism for the economic and social benefit of the Caribbean people. Government membership reflects the region's diversity and include French, English, Spanish, and Dutch-speaking territories. Um, you have private sector membership, so you have retail, travel industry, tour operators, hotel accommodations, and carrier members, so you have regional and international carri air carriers, and allied members such as firms, good agencies providing goods and services that would help the tourism industry. So some of the things that the CTO does is tourism marketing, research and information management, such as providing relevant and up-to-date information to stakeholders, such as how many tourists came this month, how many tourists came by air, how many tourists came by cruise. You have product development and technical, technical assistance, so it's helping stakeholders to conceptualize a niche in the industry. It provides a forum for those interested in developing, improving, and promoting the Caribbean tourism product. It advertises the Caribbean as one destination, 
uh, it sponsors trade shows in Europe and USA and maintains up-to-date websites in different languages for travelers to access information on the Caribbean. Some challenges of the CTO would be the high degree of foreign ownership of the various stages of the tourism products in the Caribbean. For example, if there are any airlines that come into the region, more than likely they're going to be um, foreign owned. Um, you have upgrading its members to the need for e-services. E-services also cut out the middleman in the Caribbean and much of the profits would remain in foreign hands. Um, maintaining the Caribbean's competitiveness in the global marketplace, that's also a challenge. And the environmental situation. When you're promoting mass tourism on fragile ecosystems, um, there's going to be an environmental price to pay to tourism. So those were a few of the organizations that uh, are, have um, contributed to Caribbean integration, but there are so many more institutions. Um, just to name a few, you have Food Nutrition Institute, you have Caribbean Telecommunications Union, you have Island Resources Foundation. As I said, there are many institutions that have come about through Caribbean integration. So, um, as we're doing this program in order to help students to prepare for their CAPE exams, even though the essay section is not um, going to be a part of the examinations in, for the 2020 exam period, knowing how to analyze and answer these questions is still going to be very important because the same analytical skills that you need to write an essay, it's the same anal analytical skill you're going to need to write um, to answer multiple choice questions. So some sample questions um, in the past would be, explain how regionalism and globalization constitute two opposing forces. Um, and that's a 20 mark question. So therefore, you have to understand what is regionalism and then what is globalization. And then that's how you'll be able to answer the question. So regionalism is going to be integration. So basically coming together. Globalization is going to be freeing up the market and um, internationalization of services and funds. Now, regionalism is going to be about protection, coming together. Globalization is an opposing, opposing force because it's supposed to make countries compete with each other on an equal footing. So in that way, regionalism and globalization would be opposing forces. Okay. Um, and once you start to think about it that way, the question does not become as hard as you think it is. Right. So give two reasons why the West Indies Federation failed. Um, as we went through in the pr presentation, we would have learned that um, there was some infighting, there wasn't an agreement on the different um, rules that were established for to make the federation work. And also, Jamaica had um, uh, left the federation first, and as they, um, Eric Williams um, surmised, one from 10 leaves not. So those are some of the reasons. What is the relationship between the University of the West Indies and the Caribbean Institute of Media and Communication? Well, UWE, um, in Jamaica in particular, is home to the Caribbean Institute of Media and Communication, which helps to train um, the region's journalists and media workers. So therefore, um, that would be the relationship between the two. It is a center located within the, unit, um, the UE system. So I hope that you all would have learned a little bit about the Caribbean integration movement within the Caribbean. And also, I would hope that this would have helped you to prepare for your CAPE, Caribbean Studies, examination.
Thank you. You've been watching Homeschool 101, a partnership between ABS Television and the Ministry of Education. Thank you for viewing this lesson. Join us again next time.